you know, something got brought to my attention last night by brother uh, Wally Works over at Revelations of Jesus Christ Ministries. Um, first Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, really, really says a whole lot about what's going on in the world. Um, I'm sorry, we can say the world, but actually what's really going on in this country that we live in of the United States of America. Um, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23 says, it's really short, for rebellion is as of the sin of witchcraft. Mm. For rebellion is as of the sin witchcraft. I apologize for the darkness, but it is nighttime and I, I wanted to get this off and um, you know, plant these seeds into the minds of uh, the saints out there so that we can meditate on this and know what we're dealing with here in the United States of America. When I think of rebellion, I think about all of the, the things that are transpiring um, as of you know, the last several years. Uh, there is no respect anymore for authority. There's no respect for our elders. There's no respect for law enforcement. There's no respect for the presidency. And there is no respect for human life anymore. And we notice since they keep on pushing the term of abortion to a much later date, all the way up until birth, there's no respect anymore for anything. People do not respect anything anymore. It's anarchy. It's, it's craziness. It's pandemonium. It's rebellion against God this world hates the Lord and because they hate it they hate him they just do the complete opposite of, of what he wants us to be what he wants us to do they act in complete rebellion rebellion to be rebellious means to purposely be against what is righteous. To walk your own walk, to march to your own beat, to make up your own rules. You don't want to be told what to do. You don't want to have a God. It reminds me of, of the children of Israel who would just flat out tell God, we don't want to serve you. We want a king. We want a king over us. We don't want to serve you, God. We don't want to walk in your ways. We don't want to live holy. We don't want to do what you want us to do. We want a king. Be careful what you ask for. When you operate in the, in the spirit of rebellion, it is witchcraft. And witchcraft is wickedness. Witchcraft isn't just about uh, goose and goblins and, and black magic and, and spells. You know, it is wickedness against God. I'm of the firm belief that this nation is most definitely under some sort of satanic spell because the things that individuals have the audacity to condone as being right and being okay and it just so happens to be against the word of God against the nature of God that's not normal that's not normal behavior folks because once upon a time people thought differently. Once upon a time, people had respect for the Bible. People had respect for God. But nowadays, people have no fear of the Lord, no respect of God whatsoever. 
the preachers go out into the streets and they evangelize and they get stuff thrown all over them. They get spit on. They get assaulted. People don't care no more. It's witchcraft. Be very careful what you ask for. Very careful what you ask for. When you choose to operate in rebellion, you choose to do what is wrong in the sight of the Lord, when you choose to go against the grain for your own pleasure, for your own lust, to fulfill your own desires, it is rebellion and it is of the sin of witchcraft. Let us stay praying. Let us pray for the lost. Let me, let me say that before I get off of here. Let us pray for those who don't know Jesus Christ. When Jesus hung on that cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They don't know what they want. They're in darkness. They're in rebellion against you. They think this is what they want, but it's not. There's a lot of people with that same spirit of rebellion over them today. They think they know what they want. They believe in their hearts that they know what they want. When we need to be very careful about that as well. And the book of Jeremiah tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? But yet Satan in the world tells us to follow our hearts, follow our dreams and desires. When the word of God tells us that the, the heart is the most deceitful above all. Who can know it? Let us pray for the lost. We need to pray for them because if they die in their sins without hearing the gospel, they're going to go to hell. Regardless of what you heard, hell is not a temporary place. Hell is a place that you cannot get out of. There is no pleading with the Lord. There is no begging. There is no wagering if you go to hell. But we can't let that happen, saints. I know it's hard. Listen to me. Listen. I understand that it's hard to pray for these hateful, wicked individuals. I know. I know that it's hard to pray for those who blaspheme the name of God. I know that it's hard to pray for those who hate you for the name of Christ's sake. I know that it's hard to pray for those who want to close the doors of the churches and forsake us from worshiping and fellowship. And I know that it's hard to pray for those who condone abortion, who condone same-sex marriage, who condone pedophilia. I know it's hard to pray for them, but we got to. We have to. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Remember, always keep those words in your mind. The words of Christ, when you think about the evil things that these people want, the rebellious attitudes that these people display, think about what the Lord said. If they don't know what they're doing, they don't know. They don't know, Lord. They don't know. Proverbs 1, if you read the whole chapter, there are some passages in there that tell you to tell you about individuals who walk in darkness. The wicked walk in darkness. That means that they're blind. They don't know what, what's right, what's wrong, because they're so deep in their sin. They're so blind. But Romans chapter 2 tells us that us believers in Christ, we need to lead the blind. 
and we need to shine the light on the feet of the wicked so that they can see that they're dwelling in their iniquity because if we don't do something they're going to die and go to hell I don't want that but nobody and nothing I, feel, I got a feeling that we're going to be <laughs> the saints. We're going to be working overtime. If you call yourself a true Christian, a true believer in God, and you don't feel what I feel right now, something's wrong. That sense of urgency to pray, that sense of urgency to cry out to the Lord, that sense of urgency to want these people to be saved. Samuel comes to mind. Samuel, when when Saul, when King Saul did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, when he decided that he was not going to obey what God told him to do, when he told him to kill all of the oxen and the and all of the sheep and all of the, the men, women, and children. I know that sounds bad, but you got to look at it in this context, folks. God gave a commandment and Saul didn't do it. Samuel, the prophet, cried out to the Lord all night long. Not because of his wrongdoing. Not because of his sin. Not because he needed to repent. But he did it because of the wickedness of King Saul and the children of Israel following their king, obeying their king. So Samuel's crying out to the, to the Lord over the children of Israel. And we need to be doing the same thing for the people around the world that don't know what they do. The spirit of rebellion is like essence of witchcraft. God bless you all. Stay prayed up. Stay prayed up all the time. Stay close to Jesus all the time. He's close. Very close. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're new. Peace.